Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about the roadmap to become an efficient programmer. So normally I get this question a lot maybe in the college seminar or maybe in the YouTube comments that I want to learn programming or I want to be a developer, tell me a roadmap. The thing is, there are multiple ways of becoming a software developer. Of course, a lot of people go to college to do that and few people, they learn by themselves. We call them as a self-taught developers. The thing is, there are certain mistakes which we do. Of course, we'll talk about the roadmap, what are the steps you have to follow, or maybe if I go back to my college days, what are the steps I will follow to be a good programmer or an efficient programmer. But first, we have to understand some mistakes. The first mistake which you do is, so let's say if you want to be an Android developer, of course, you can choose any platform. Let's go for Android here. Now, if you want to be an Android developer, what you will do is you will go to YouTube or some other platform, and then you will search, okay, I want to be an Android developer, give me a course. Now, in this course, of course, you start from the basics, right? To understand, okay, this is a syntax which you have to learn. This is how the platform works. And then you will move towards building projects. So what you do is you watch the video. And in the video, they teach you how to build the project. And then you build the project by yourself. In fact, you're not building by yourself. You're basically copying the code of the instructor. And at that point, so the mistake is not you have learned this way. The mistake is now you are feeling that you are a developer just because you built some projects. And then you try to put these projects in your portfolio. You say, okay, I have built a clone of Facebook. I have built a clone of Instagram. No, that's not how you become a developer. The thing is, if you want to be a good developer, the code should come out of your own mind. And it takes time, okay? So when you try to build a project by yourself, it will take a lot of time. I remember when I was building my first project in 2008, or nine, it took us six months to understand what to do, okay? Because we were not sure if you get a problem statement from your client, how do you convert that into code and how to, how to make it work? Of course, the first project which I built was actually discarded by the client after six months. But anyway, we tried and then we learned a lot. And after that, I have I built some projects which was implemented properly. So that's the learning you have to go through. You have to understand how do you convert a problem statement into a code, an efficient code, okay? It's not just, okay, my code is working, it will be used by the client. No, that's not how you build a project. So that's the first mistake you do. The second mistake is you basically try to avoid the fundamentals. So normally, let's say if you want to learn, let's say React, or maybe if you want to learn Flutter for Android. So recently I was talking to my team regarding working on a Flutter project for Android development and iOS. At that point, one of the questions which I got, hey, do we have to learn Dart before we go to Flutter? Because if you know Java, if you know other languages, it is easy to learn Dart, but they were thinking, can we just directly skip learning Dart and learn from somewhere how to build a Flutter project and you can build it? That's a mistake. Because if you don't understand the foundation concept of a particular technology, you will get stuck. Of course, now you will say, hey, we have ChatGPT, we have Stack Overflow, they will help you. No, the thing is, even if you want to take a help from this platform, you have to understand the concepts. You have to understand the errors, even if you want to search them. And if your basics are not clear, you will not be able to solve that even with the help of ChatGPT or Stack Overflow. So the first thing we have to do is you have to focus on your basics, okay? Now this basics can be the computer foundation uh, concepts, you know, how computer works, how RAM works, how CPU works, that's right. Uh, if you're coming from the engineering background, you basically learn all this concept. In fact, I just want to add one more thing here. Your college degree is important. I know a lot of people will say, you know, you don't need to attend colleges, you can learn everything online. See, one of the drawback of having a college degree from a good engineering college or any college for that matter is you invest a lot of your hours in the lectures, right? But then you have to also understand those things are important because what you're learning there is foundations. A lot of people say, hey, you don't learn advanced concept in your college but at least you learn the basics, right? If your foundations are not clear, you will struggle. Example, you learn about computer concepts, you learn about networking, you learn about uh, a programming language, you learn about how database works, right? So those are your foundations. So everything comes in basics here. So what you should know, so if you talk about basics, there are certain things you have to learn. So learn about the computer concepts, then focus on one, programming language. So focus on your computer concepts, focus on a programming language, right? Now, will you become a good programmer just by learning a language? No, language, programming language is just a tool. So let's say if you decide to go for C, C++, Python, Java, JavaScript, doesn't matter. Whatever language you learn is just a tool to build a project. 
there's a lot of things you have to understand to be an efficient programmer. So focus on computer concepts, focus on programming language, understand the concept of database. Now this can be any database, doesn't matter. It can be SQL, it can be NoSQL. The thing is, a lot of people say that no SQL is the future, SQL is going back. No, SQL is still used in industry. It depends upon the project, how your project is defined or what is your client requirement. So based on that, you decide, okay, do you want to go for SQL? Do you want to go for no SQL? Or in most of the project, we go for the hybrid approach. So you store data in SQL and no SQL as well. And depending upon the query, you try to fetch it from SQL or no SQL databases. So learn about the database concepts. Now, by knowing this concept, you can basically build a small project now. In fact, there is also one concept. So when I say computer concepts also includes networking concepts. So that also includes, but after this, now you know the foundation. Now in the current world, of course, the when I started my career, the technology stack was different and now it's very different. Now, irrespective of which stack you work on, it can be Java stack, it can be Java, JavaScript stack, it can be Python stack, doesn't matter. There are certain things you have to learn. The first one is Git. In fact, everything else now which is, which is coming, it's an advanced part. So basically, after learning a programming language and database, you have to learn Git as well. Because in every company now, in fact, I can say 99% of the projects, they are using some version control system. It can be Git or something else. But Git is very famous, right? You might have heard about GitHub or GitLabs. So the underlying technology is Git, learn Git. Next, there's one concept which is very famous nowadays, which is cloud. In fact, before cloud, you have to learn about Docker, right? How do you, how do you containerize your application? Okay, now I don't want to explain everything in this video. I will try to put the link in description about the concepts like how do you work with Git, what is Git, uh, database concepts, a programming language playlist, and Docker as well in the description. Okay, after that you have to understand, see if you talk about the real world now, most of the projects are deployed on a cloud servers. Now companies are not managing the servers by themselves. They basically use a cloud servers here. It can be AWS, it can be a Google Cloud, it can be Microsoft Azure or any other cloud service. So basically they are using cloud service here. And I would highly recommend you to learn about the concepts of cloud. Now, even if you're not, if you have not joined the company yet, you know, a lot of people have this mindset, hey, you know, I can just simply learn all this concept when I, when I join the company. What if I say in the interviews as well, they expect you to know these concepts. Even when you send your resume, they will check, do you know cloud or have you worked on cloud before? Even for a small project, have you worked on Docker before? Now, since we're talking about interviews, there's one particular question in your mind, which is how about DSA? Do we have to learn DSA? Yes. Okay, so DSA is not an optional thing. When I started my career, in the interviews, they were not asking for DSA. They were asking about Java concepts and database concepts. But things started changing now. Does it mean that in the earlier days when you, when you want to build a project, DSA was not important? It was important. And then when I was learning about programming or when I was applied, applying for the interviews, I knew that DSA is important. I have learned about DSA because DSA helps you in different ways. It helps you to build your logic. It also helps you to understand how do you store data? How do you structure data, right? But yeah, with the recent trend, a lot of people are saying you have to learn only DSA. No, DSA, you have to learn. It's not an optional thing, okay? And it's not also the ultimate thing. DSA is necessary. Apart from that, you have to learn this concept as well. And I can see a lot of people are focusing more on DSA, but not on these things. So you should know DSA. So if you are spending, let's say if you have 100 hours to do all this, maybe you can spend 30 hours on DSA and 70 hours on these concepts. So these are the tools you have to learn, right? In fact, there are a lot of tools. In fact, you can let me know the tools in comments as well so that it will be helpful for others. I don't want to list out all the tools here. The important thing is you have to learn the tools, right? All these are tools. Apart from this, if you want to be an efficient programmer, you have to build projects. In fact, I should also write DSA here because it will help you to understand algorithms. It will help you to, to build logic. Apart from this, you have to practice different problems. Uh, so you can just search on the internet. There are a lot of problems available, solve it. Yeah, they call it as CP or uh, online competitions, participate in that, participate in the hackathons, and also build projects. So projects are also very important. Okay, it's not just by watching someone else video, you will say, okay, this is a project I want to build. No, create your own problem and try to solve it. That's how you build projects. And of course you will get stuck somewhere. 
And every time you get stuck, every time you see errors, that's the opportunity to learn something new. Okay, so we work on the projects as well. Is this enough? Uh, not exactly. The thing is, there's a word here which is called efficient, right? It's not just a programmer. You have to be an efficient programmer. It also means that when you see a problem, you should be able to solve that problem in a good speed. Of course, you should not spend months by understanding a problem and solving it. You have to be fast in that terms. And you can do that when you solve a lot of problems, when you make multiple projects. Next, you have to make sure that you build a stable product. It's not just if your code works, it works. Right? It's not that way. Of course, you have seen a lot of memes, right? If your code works, don't touch it. But you have to make sure that if to be an efficient programmer, you have to build efficient softwares or efficient apps, which is stable. Also, your app needs to be secured. So whatever you do with your application, make sure that your application is secured. And there are a lot of different terms as well. You have to also make sure that your application is scalable. And for that, you have to also understand a concept called system design okay so apart from all this you have to also understand how do you design a system how do you build an application which should be scalable stable and uh, if you want it should also maintainable if you want to change something in your in your software it should not break down the entire project you know a lot of time when you build a project you try to build a project which is or which looks like a house of cards where if you move one card your entire project collapses we don't want that right so Build a project in such a way that it should be scalable, updatable, and also maintainable. And now if someone tells you, hey, you can be a developer in three months. No, it takes time. It took me around six years to reach here. But then, of course, you will not take six years because things have been changed. Now, a lot of things have been, there are a lot of tools available to do this quickly. But it will take time. Now, it may take one year to five years, depending upon your speed, depending upon how much time you want to give but it takes time okay don't get into that zone that you can be a developer in six months you can be a developer but then you're not efficient you're not making a product which are efficient products okay so learn all this and most of the videos i will have i will paste that in the description so that you can refer now let me know in the comment section if this type of videos are helpful so that i can make this type of videos more in the future Bye bye